This is unprecedented in U.S. history. You have a sitting grand jury that did the special report. It's a unique procedure in Georgia. The foreperson of that grand jury, recommending, by the way, charges to the grand jury that would actually have the capability to indict. The forewoman of this grand jury, a 30-year-old uh, Emily Kors, uh, not only started speaking to the media, but started speaking to the media about exactly what you can't do, deliberating, discussions. Did you recommend charges against Donald Trump? I really don't want to share something that the judge made a conscious decision not to share. I, I will tell you that it was a process where we heard his name a lot. Uh, we definitely heard a lot about former President Trump. And we definitely discussed him a lot in the room. And I will say that uh, when this list comes out, you wouldn't, there are no major plot twists waiting for you. I indicate that as people want Trump indicted, he's going to be indicted. I mean, that, that's what I, that's how I, I view that is no big twist. This is a grand juror who's the four person and is discussing deliberative process, which I need to say again, you cannot do. First of all, she talked about the deliberations because she said we discussed Trump a lot. So that's part one. Part two is discussing specific witnesses and what they had to say or not or did not have to say. Take a listen. Mr. Meadows didn't share very much at all and was not very willing to speak on much of anything. He asserted his rights um, under the Fifth Amendment and under uh, executive privilege, which he absolutely had the right to do. And that was pretty much that. I, I mean, I, I cannot even believe that this is happening. I can't believe this is real audio. Okay, this, or, I mean, or the, real you, this is like a Saturday Night Live yeah. skit. You've got the grand jury four person talking about what the witness was saying or not saying or what privileges they invoked. I mean, think about this for a moment. This young lady clearly <laughs> does not understand that it's a tremendous responsibility. She's, no she's 30 years old, so she's an adult. She needs to... This is, you know what though, She's already, she did CNN, MSNBC, NBC, the Associated Press, and the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and? The New York Times. And the New York Times. She wants her moment in the sun. Guess what you don't get to do then, Fannie Willis? You know what you don't get to do, Fannie Willis? You don't get to prosecute the former president of the United States. When you're turning these processes into a third world country jur jurisdiction, that's what this looks like. It looks like, you're, it looks like you're dealing with a court in Venezuela, or worse. That this is the United States of America, even if he wasn't the former president of the United States, no defendant should be put up with this, would have to put up this. This is outrageous. After everything that you've seen, what would your reaction be if the DA decides against bringing any charges after what you've seen? I will be sad if nothing happens. Like, that's, that's about my only request there is, is for something to happen. I don't necessarily know what it is. I'm not the legal expert. I'm not the judge, I'm not the lawyers, but I, I will be frustrated if nothing happens. This was too much, too much information, too much of my time. This is a high stakes, high profile criminal investigation of the former president of the United States conducted by a local district attorney. This is exactly what I argued to the Supreme Court should not be happening. Do not give these local DAs this kind of authority. And that's why under that opinion, you can go to federal court, which his current lawyers in Atlanta need to be doing. And I got to tell you something. The four person, the grand jury saying, I will be sad if something is not done. And she's saying this on TV and we have all these charges we could bring. Here's the other problem with this, folks. And I, I want people to be clear on this. Okay. And this is where the outrage is. People's liberty is at stake. People's lives will be forever changed if they're indicted by a grand jury. And they're making a mockery, a joke out of this. And this is in Atlanta, Georgia. Grow up. In your view, people will not be surprised when they see the list of names to come out who you recommended to face indictment. Especially if they've been following the investigation. I, I can't see it being a shocker. I could list the 75 witnesses that went there and say, well, how, how do you feel about this? You should feel that this is outrage. It, it is so outrageous. It's hard to believe this is actually happening. She even went so far on NBC Nightly News to talk about potentially how many people they recommended to indict. So what she's also indicated is that they have recommended indictments, which none of this is supposed to happen. How many people was this a long list? It's not a short list. 
So we're talking about more than a dozen people? I would say that, yes. Are these recognizable names, names that people would know? There are certainly names that you would recognize, yes. This is unprecedented. This is outrageous. It's disgusting, actually, that people's li- This is what you got to understand. She said, people you know, people you don't know, famous names, some not-so-famous names. Folks, their liberty, they could go to jail over this. And a lot of these were edited interviews. Yes. So should we get to see the full? Oh, yeah, I want to see the whole thing. 